Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We are looking at the power sector at this point following the collapse of the national grid. Now, as Nigerians are experiencing epileptic power supply and a hike in electricity uh, in fuel prices, uh, electricity distribution companies discourse in the country said the recent collapse of the grid occurred at 10.40 a.m. and disrupted power supply within their networks. Consequently, you have this discourse in affected states like Lagos, Kaduna, Abia, Nambara, Eboni, Enugu, Imo State, among others. Apologize to their customers and promise to keep them updated on the situation as close monitoring of the situation with a partnership uh, with the TCN is ongoing on to determine the cost and the timeline for a solution. Now the grid uh, experienced this disruption uh, since, has experienced this disruption in February, May, July and August 2021. Now in 2022, uh, we also have reports saying that it would be the second time. We do have a guest in the studio. He is an energy expert, O'Neill Lajuwomi, uh, joining us as a group CEO of Waveland. It's good to have you join us this morning in our studio. Thank you, Messi. Good to have you. Thank All you. right, so um, let's start with this now. How, how does this really make you feel as an energy expert, as a Nigerian, yeah. uh, total collapse and the fact that the nation is thrown into uh, gross darkness? I mean, for me, it's more like a broken record. Uh, I've been on TV shows for quite a number of time and talking on this matter. I don't know, I mean, where we're where we headed, headed at this point in time in the country. But of course, uh, I, I'm privy to some developments that soon, or maybe soon, we will start to see some uh, improvements in the, in, the, in the power supply. But of course, uh, we cannot say much because uh, we've been hoping for a long time in Nigeria uh, for a better electricity supply. And uh, way before I was born, I'm sure there's been a lot of uh, uh, epileptic power going on, but and since I've been growing up, it's been the same story, uh, one day after another. Uh, but of course, I mean, where, where we are right now, we shouldn't be there as a country. Uh, there's a lot that can be done to have a reliable and sustainable power. Interesting. Uh, um, so what are your thoughts on the, the generating, um, uh, the, the, the re let me say the reasons given by uh, those, those, those involved, you know, sure. the distribution companies have put up announcements telling yeah. us, oh, when it's not our fault or, you know, um, ask the others. Yeah. The um, Transmission Company of Nigeria had to put up a, a statement earlier to say what's happening or what will, will come is not their fault. They're only transmitting what they can get. And then the GRE company is talking about, of course, uh, issues with payment and, and collection of monies, you know, from the distribution companies. And of course, you look at the, the, um, the, the, the amount of power produced by Nigeria in terms of megawatts. So what are your thoughts on the reasons being given? Well, Kofi, thank you so much. I, I mean, uh, let me just break it down a little bit, right? You've mentioned uh, most part of it. The, pa the power sector has three key um, major value chain. Uh, one is the generation company. In fact, four, actually, I take it back. One is the generation company. Uh, one, uh, the other one is the transmission company. And we have the distribution company and then the gas uh, supply suppliers. So there's a lot of uh, uh, factors that could uh, result to grid collapse, partial grid collapse or total grid collapse. And yes, of course, there's the, uh, I mean, the TCN, and of course, at some point may not really understand what has uh, uh, triggered the grid collapse. And if you remember, as I 10.40 a.m. yesterday, there was no real reason for it. I said, we're still investigating it. And there are a lot of factors. One, it could be the gas supply. Uh, for example, last month, we, we've experienced uh, two grid collapse uh, this year uh, already, uh, and it's just barely a quarter of the year, all right? Uh, the last, uh, in January, the factor that, that caused the grid collapse was uh, the pipeline vandalism. So there was gas supply, uh, was cut off, that supplies the generation company. Uh, the transfer cutters pipeline that feeds a, a, a motor show and them a uh, lot uh, was cut off. So when that happens, there's a drop in the load that goes into the network. And when that drop occurs, the grid collapses because it's not stable. All right? So that's one factor. You also had the egg being shut down, egg being fire came up. I mean, that again, there's a drop. So grid collapse is, occurs when there's disturbances along the transmission. Okay. So, but, but let's look at the fact that the country has like 12 generating, uh, you know, power plants, yeah. three of which are hydro and nine are gas powered. Sure. And, the, you know, it feels like we have been very uh, dependent on just two. So why limit yourself to just two 
to, uh, to plants when you have, you know, 12? Yeah, uh, I mean, 80% of uh, power generation in Nigeria is, is, uh, is gas-fired. The other 20 is from other sources. 80%. 80%. Okay. So, yeah, so if you have gas uh, uh, problem, gas supply problem, the grid will collapse. The problem with uh, the Nigerian power sector uh, and Nigerian power supply industry is the fact that it's centralized. And I said this uh, without uh, 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 time, without number, right? You generate power all the way from Sapele and you transmit to Ogbumosho, where the TCN control center is, and then I'll start to distribute, you understand? So now that cannot work. Along that line, uh, that happened, there could be disturbances. For example, I've mentioned the, uh, the gas pipeline cuts off to the power plant in Sapele. What happens? The power, short transmission center cannot receive power. The grid is going to collapse, right? And then again, you have the transmission company. There are a lot of obsolete equipment along the line. Most of the installation have been done since 1960s. Of course, I understand there are some upgrades currently ongoing. Um, coupled with that, you also have the distribution company. The distribution company also has uh, uh, some problem in all of this because if they don't take the power, that uh, the transmission company is willing out, then again, the system becomes overloaded. Again, that could result to collapse. So there are different factors. Uh, one co a collapse maybe, I mean, has different factors, uh, for reasons. But of course, back to your question, why are we relying on to gas fire, to, you know, just to um, the hydropower plant, for example, is what we have going on at the moment because that's not uh, been affected by gas supply but of course that also has its own problems yes, it gets yes. affected by low yeah. levels of water Be because the, the, the minister of um, uh, power abu Khalil, had uh, initially last week said that um, uh, the power, poor poor power supply situation was caused of low water levels sure you know um, um is that true bearing in mind you've said 80 percent of a power supply comes from gas yeah i mean it's 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 quite i mean i don't know that fact you know to be honest but it's very possible uh, because you feel this year alone we've witnessed a lot of uh, vandalism in the pipeline and that's this that's the feedstock that supplies the power plant generation company okay. if general com generation companies do not have gas to fire the gas at uh, the power plant they cannot supply power to the transmission the transmission cannot supply to the distribution network the distribution network cannot supply to us the customers so, so that's about a lot of problems so so it brings us back you know to the same book of saying that if we have we why would why would do we not have to depend on you know the two uh, that we have because it's the generation yeah. you you have the discourse telling you we cannot give what we don't have sure. so if you are generating uh, 5000 megawatt or 4000 or thereabout then you would have to distribute this amongst you know the people and that's uh, quite limiting if you look at it looking at the entire population yeah. but you have mentioned the issue of decentralization Yes. of you know um, this plant is generating yeah. plant so and we don't talk about the collapse are you now saying would you should we be thinking or looking in the direction of having this plant you know sometimes installed in another part of the country I as agree. well I agree so if you if you hit the nail on the coffin um, one of the major problem is the centralization of the whole uh, power generation and also the transmission so decentralization is one thing I've been clamoring for a long time you cannot generate power all the way from Sapele and transmit to Lagos. You know, it's not going to work. So what we need to start, what we need to start to look at is regionalizing this power supply. So Lagos, for example, should be able to generate its own power. And you know that has been going on, a matter has been going on last month. The state governments have took up that fight and they want to start uh, to look into that area. Until we have that kind of uh, uh, intervention, we're going to be facing this uh, grid collapse for a long time. So yeah, decentralization is one of the major um, solution to, to all of these problems. It, it, it's been said that, um, you know, by the, the Jenkos, that um, uh, it's, it's, it's not always about the, the lack of um, production capacity in terms of the megawatts. For instance, um, uh, we're told that in 2015, you know, they had 6,616 megawatts available. Out of that, 3,606 was taken. And 3,010 megawatts was stranded, wasn't mm. taken. Um, they also said that, you know, sure. for instance, um, uh, there was, um, uh, you know, so we have this, you have uh, 7,040 megawatts, an average of that, which of which 3,212 megawatts was utilized, even a stranded amount of 3,828. So, so what accounts for this, that Nigeria produces more electricity than it's actually giving its citizens, but they're not able to yeah. take this up and you have some stranded. Sure. So again, the stranded power, all right, 
comes with uh, comes from the problem of the transmission network. So I've talked about the part one, which is the gas okay. problem. Now we move to the transmission network. The transmission network have got obsolete, um, you know, uh, 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 they, they're obsolete. So they've been there for a long yeah. time, mm -hmm. and little or no investment has gone into that upgrade. You need to they constantly need to upgrade the system to make it robust to be able to take the power that is being generated by Genco is called the wheeling capacity. The wheeling capacity of the TCN is badly, you know, it's not put together, you know, in a fair in a fair way. Put it that way, it's not put together, and then they cannot. The power becomes stranded. The generation capacity becomes stranded. You cannot wheel it to the distribution company. Of course, some distribution companies are also rejecting power. They're rejecting power because they're rejecting to take of take the power that's available because they cannot distribute it. Again, there's systems, the different systems are obsolete. So transmission network has not been upgraded to meet current yes, demand? Yes, no, no, it's not. And exactly. then we have, to, we have to let go of what we, we, we It's stranded. We stranded. can't even wheel it to, you can't wheel the maximum power that is on, that's available to the distribution company. The, the transmission company is responsible, is the, the most, you know, uh, I, I put it like that, is a central uh, uh, value uh, is the central provider of the services in the value chain. So anything that anything that affects transmission company affects the whole. And government has refused to relinquish that. One. Of course, it's still it's still um, centralized. centralized. It's centralized. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yeah. but 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 we also know that I mean, if if we're talking progression and making progress, uh, countries have moved beyond the hydroelectric power plant and the thermal power plant, and for us, we're very dependent on this. Um, shouldn't we be discussing having state harnessing resources, looking at you know those states that can produce coal to harness it? Yes. And we begin to look at coal, um, you know, plants, uh, coal power plants. I mean, plants that will be, um, you know, powered by coal at this point in time. Should we not be thinking forward in this direction? Well, uh, it, it's um, you've got a good point, but it's going to be a bit difficult. Uh, the reason um, the reason for that is the, the world at large is moving beyond beyond them um, you know fossil fuel generation and is going to green energy all right so raising funding for those type of budget may be a, you know difficult because there's not a lot of funding for that but of course yes I am for I'm, I'm advocate for however um, however we can get out of this situation we should exploit every possible uh, uh, methods that can get us out of the situation so if you have coal I know some countries now, are doing, uh, uh, they, they, they're firing the power plants with green uh, coal, you know, the coal that are uh, environmental friendly. We, we can look at that. We can look at hydropower. Um, we can look at uh, renewable energy, uh, I mean, solar, solar power. Uh, but again, we ha it boils down to decentralizing this power. You cannot, uh, even if you have um, coal power or you have solar power, you cannot put it on the grid because the grid is not reliable. The grid is obsolete and cannot even take additional generation. Mm. So it needs to be decentralized. Your point is, if it's in Enugu, Enugu has coal. Can we now look out to make um, uh, power generation in be, Enugu with coal? The, the current constitutional because, amendment processes has yeah. actually now they passed that to yes. allow for states to. Generate. Yes, yes. So I mean, it would be brilliant if that becomes it, it, it becomes uh, implemented, because another thing for us is speaking good English and passing laws that never gets implemented <laughs> but, but, but in the country. But the, the system and the framework, yeah. we've not upgraded it to even meet current reality. No, we haven't. We haven't. I, I, but I must uh, I must say, like for example, yeah, some states uh, that are already making moves, like Lagos State, for example, uh, there are a couple of the ancillaries, the public utilities that are powered by independent power power companies uh, through your maybe compressed natural gas and whatnot. Uh, I'm supposed to be in your next few days. But I mean, the state government is looking at powering their sectariat with gas. Um, you know, I just I was just a commissioner a few days ago. So there are a lot of states are beginning to look you at... Have, you um, have gas pipelines crisscrossing River State. You do. And, you have. And, and you I know do. one of the major uh, international companies has pipelines, have mm -hmm. a, you know, gas to be able to supply to some yeah. private institutions. Yeah. Yeah, you have gas in Lagos. You have gas pipelines in Lagos. On the, on the yeah, on the ground. I mean, they're all on the ground. You have gas pipeline that's come to VI. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, these things are, it's, it's just a crazy, excuse my word, a terrible situation right now. Uh, and I hope that we'll get there someday. Okay. There's so, a lot of intervention going on uh, in the power sector. For example, uh, according to the special advisor to the president, Ahmad Zakari, we need $41 billion to improve power supply in Nigeria. So, but looking at the, in, I mean, in the interim now, 
uh, the fact that you have this collapse, because this is our reality, sure. and we need to get out of it, uh, what would you be suggesting? We know that the government and stakeholders are already having the emergency and marathon meetings, but we don't know, I mean, because it would not be the first time um, that these meetings are being held. Yeah. Uh, is the outcome, what happens, but what can be done? Is there anything that can be done in the meantime to salvage the situation? Yes, we know that the major issue is the fact that you yeah. know, the power plants are centralized yeah. and that's not helping any issue, but what can be done at this point in time? Uh, well, uh, uh, Messi, thank you so much. Unfortunately, it's not going to be a fire brigade approach. You cannot have this, so this solved immediately within the next six to one year, six months to one year. We need strategic decisions to be made. One of them is the regulatory framework, and I'm glad Kofi did mention uh, law has been passed by state government to be able to generate their power. I need to check that out very well. Um, that is one. NERC, Nigerian Electricity Regulation Company, must be strengthened to be able to really penalize past power, uh, um, the value chain. Uh, whoever is the weakest link in the value chain must be able to penalize them, all right, strengthen them. Uh, also, the uh, regulatory framework needs to be adhered to, all right? That's one. That's two, right? We've talked about decentralization. Uh, we've talked about the regulatory framework. And now um, we'll talk about investment in the power sector. I know the Nigerian government has, has I mean, within the last few years, there's a lot going on. There's a Nigerian Economic Sustainability Plan uh, of the federal government, uh, um, uh, which is... Uh, which is currently ongoing, ongoing at the moment, all right? But, but of course, we're not going to see that happen really quick. We're not going to see that happen real quick. The development is going to take some time. Mm. All right. The generating companies have been crying um, uh, of, of a debt, 1.634 trillion naira debt, and they've also been sure. crying asking for the fixing of the national grid, which you've talked about. And uh, hopefully this can be done. Otherwise, like you, you, you seem to be saying, we'll continue to have this problem. Yes. I want to thank you very much for your time. O'Neill Lajuomi is an energy expert, and he's been our guest this morning on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. O'Neill, thank you for Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for coming. You. We appreciate it. Thank you. you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's time to go. Messi's a wrap. Of course. It's been a fantastic yeah. time having this uh, national discussion, the past sector, and also looking at the educational sector. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Many thanks for watching. Always, I am Messi Bopo. Have a great day. And I'm Kofi Bartels. We return tomorrow morning. Keep watching Plus TV Africa. Good morning.